for joining me for this full-length Pilates Reformer class today. We are going to be working on strengthening the muscles that surround the SI joint or in that general area. That being said, I am not a licensed physical therapist, nor am I a doctor. These are just exercises that I have researched and found to strengthen the SI area, the SI joint area, not the SI joint itself. You cannot strengthen that. Um, but please do not do this if you are suffering from SI joint pain. It will not alleviate your pain and could in fact possibly make it worse. No one is there to correct your exercises. I have uh, my reformer. I have a box and I just got this mini magic circle. I'm very excited about it. It came in yesterday. I only have one exercise that I may be using it for. If you want to use your mini magic circle, if you have a regular magic circle, or if you have a squishy ball, a yoga block would work. Absolutely nothing would work. It's completely optional. Like I said, I'm just kind of excited to have it. So to begin, I've gone ahead and I've put my um, footwork springs on. I have three to four footwork springs on. Personally, on my machine, my preference is to use three heavies one medium, that is three greens and one red on my machine. I have my headrest up. It is optional to use your neck pillow if you would like. So let's go ahead and begin lying down on our machine. I'm going to gently rest my heels on top of the foot bar. I'm not pushing off of the foot bar just yet. While I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick check in with my body. I'm gonna go ahead and try to locate a nice neutral spine. So just gently rest your feet. Let's go ahead and make sure we have a nice flat sacrum, a nice stable surface. To flatten my sacrum, personally, I make sure that my, uh, my tailbone and the back of my hip bones are on the mat, but I have to really draw in my lower abdominal slightly. I have a slight lift between the top of my hip bones to my 12th rib on my back. My shoulder blades are nice flat wide across the mat. Think of them as widening slightly, and the tips of my shoulder blades are pulling back. I'm sinking all 12 ribs into the mat. I'm drawing them together on the front. It should feel as though I'm wearing a corset that's being pulled tightly. My belly button is drawing towards my spine, and my feet are gently resting on my foot bar like we discussed. From here, we're gonna go ahead and tuck and tilt our pelvis. So, I'm gonna inhale, exhale, Sink my belly button even further to my spine and imprint my entire spine onto the mat. So that little lift that I had between my top hip bones and my 12th rib is pulling towards the mat. Think of laying a strand of pearls all the way on to the reformer carriage. I'm going to come back to neutral and I can tilt my pelvis back slightly if I would like and find neutral again. Imprint my spine. Try not to use your legs at all for this, guys. This should all be an abdominal movement. Neutral and tilt and neutral and tuck. My tailbone's not coming off of the mat. This is a pseudo bridge movement. Go back to neutral and tilt, but I am not lifting anything off of the mat into a bridge position. Neutral. We're going to do this two more, three more times, let's say, at your own speed. Find the breath, work through the breath on this guy. Good. One more. Okay, now come back to neutral. Find that same position. You might find a deeper abdominal connection, a nicer wrap of your ribs to the tucks and tilts now. Go ahead and draw your legs together. Think of wrapping your glutes slightly and at your sits bones, Think of tweezing them together gently to try to activate those super deep muscles around the hip joint area. We're going to do some marching, so I'm going to inhale, exhale, march my foot up to tabletop. I did my right leg first, inhale it down, replace that foot, and lift the other leg on the inhale and exhale it down. Try to maintain a tabletop position, try to stabilize your body. To to eliminate any shifting by planting the foot that was marching before marching the other leg. So stabilize the left leg and then march with the right. Stabilize the right leg, march with the left. Good. Let's do two more to each side. 
I am in a parallel position. I am still finding a neutral spine, working in a neutral spine position. I'm going to slide my heels down to the foot bar. My legs are still squeezing together, so I'm getting some nice inner thigh connection. I'm still tweezing the seat, tweezing my sits bones. I'm going to inhale to press it out, pull up on the muscles on the tops of my kneecaps, and exhale it back in. And inhale to press, and exhale to release. We have moved right into our footwork. We should have a nice, nice warmed up box of our body so we can maintain a nice neutral spine in this. We shouldn't have any shifting or tucking or tilting in our sacrum as we're doing this. So we're really stabilizing right now. Resist the springs back in. Resist them out, tweeze the seat, and resist them back in. Good. Come back in. Separate your feet and knees with your heels still together. Your knees should track over your big toes. You're rotating the femur and the hip sucking. Still think of tweezing the sits bones and inhale out. Zip up through the inner thigh and exhale back in. And inhale out and exhale in. And here's three. And four. And five. Wrap the ribs together. Elongate in the neck. Good. Let's do one more. Okay, before we move on, my shins are a little ouchy with how far back I'm flexing my feet. I'm gonna give them a little, a little articulation shake, and then I'm gonna come wide to a second position outside of the foot bar. I've just taken my Pilates V and slid my heels to the outside. I'm still flexing my feet back strongly. My knee, my knee is still tracking over my big toe. I'm still rotating the femur and the hip socket. I'm still going to tweeze the sits bow. So as I press out, I'm going to tweeze, 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 pull in on the inner thighs, and resist it back out. And inhale, and exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Pause at the top to really squeeze the best juice out of that exercise, right? Really squeeze all the muscles. Locate that neutral spine, wrap the ribs, elongate through the body, press away from the foot bar, press out through your head. Two more. We're going to do the same series, not in the same order, because, you know, we'll do parallel last. Well, you don't know, but now you do. So we're going to come back in. We're going to slide back in. We're going to work in the Pilates V position first. So I'm on the balls of my feet. My heels are raised slightly. I want to keep them in this position the whole time. Really squeeze your heels together. It's going to help with an inner thigh connection. If you squeeze your heels, you can touch your inner thighs and really feel the firing or the activation there. I'm still tracking my knee on my mid I'm going to inhale it out, pause at the top, and exhale back in. I like to work in a slightly higher heel in this position right now. That's just where I am at the moment. I used to work in a flat foot. Then I raised my heel up an inch. Right now, at this time in my Pilates, uh, Practice, I like to work in a high heel. Wherever you are, keep your heel in that position in space. Good. Here's nine. And here's 10. I'm gonna slide my feet out. Again, we're just coming to the outer edge. I'm still keeping that Pilates feet position. All I have to do is slide my feet out. But instead of putting my heels wherever I want, I'm going to pop straight up into that force arch, demi point, Las Vegas showgirl high heel position. I'm going to keep my heels here the whole time reaching up, and I'm going to press it out. Lift your heels higher and resist it back in. I find so often that clients want to just drop their heels. You really want to feel that stretch across the front of your foot. Really strengthen that area. Get a nice stretch. Squeeze those sits bones, right? Really work the area that's surrounding that bottom part of the part of that uh, hip, pelvis, sacrum area, low back. Good. Nine. And one more. Really stretch it out and come back in. Now parallel your feet. Slide them together. Super high heel demi point force arch position. Whatever you like. Lift those heels up, up, up. Feel that stretch and inhale it out and exhale it back in. 
Don't rock to your tailbone. Drop those abdominals. Really wrap those ribs and resist it back in. Here's four. Here's five. And six. Good job, guys. Seven. And eight. Come back in, and then we're going to press out for some ankle articulation work. So the first thing we're going to do is trot. So my left heel is going to drive under the foot. We're going to get a nice calf, nice calf stretch while my right knee bends parallel up to the ceiling. I'm going to lift both heels up. So we have two up, and then we'll drive the opposite foot down while the opposite knee bends up towards the ceiling. Now both heels will come up, all the way up, pause at the top. And then other heel down. And lift. And lower. Instead of a reciprocal movement where our feet are just passing each other by, we're going to lower and lift. This will also help prevent the shifting in our hips that might cause a rotational shift that could possibly irritate the SI joint from what I've seen in clients. Good. Keep it going. Nice and slow, so we really get that calf stretch today. And lift. Let's do two more to each side, and then we're going to do the double heel lower left. On the double heel lower left, we're really going to squeeze our legs together so there's nowhere else shifting. Everything will go down at the same time. Everything will lift back up at the same time. So, both feet up, and now we're going to lower down one, two, three, and lift. Two, three, and lower. And lift. And lower. Still think of tweezing those sits bones. Good. Still keep that neutral spine. Nice long neck. Here's eight. Here's nine. Squeeze all the inner aspects of your legs and feet. Good. Now drop both heels under. Micro bend your knees and resist right back in. Hold your side. Come up to sitting. We're going to change our spring tension. We're going into a single leg footwork. On single leg footwork, I recommend two springs. Myself personally, I will be using one medium and one heavy. That is one rev and one green. So, we're going to come back down. We're going to be working parallel first. So, I'm going to bring my left foot to tabletop. I'm going to be relaxed through my right ankle. You can be on high heel. We are going to press out to high heel, but if we can get a little extra ankle articulation here as well, so we're going to press out and lift our foot up. Don't lift up your tail. Just lift it straight up into the air like a post or down here, wherever you can, by keeping a nice neutral spine. Bend your knee. And come back in, relaxing the ankle as you come back in. Now press out, extend the ankle to high heel, lift the leg, bend the knee to tabletop, and come in resisting uh, the spring tension. Relax the ankle. And here's three, and kick, and lower, and in, and four, extend, kick, bend, five. Really squeeze from the glute. Really try to work this from where the thigh and the glute meet, that little smile line area. Good, here's nine. Make sure you're not shifting in your backs of your hips. Now come in, switch feet. Left foot will go on, right knee will come up into tabletop. I have a nice relaxed left ankle. I'm gonna press out on one, kick up on two, don't tuck, come up wherever you can by maintaining a neutral spine. You won't be able to go past 90 degrees because it'll lift your back hip, but think of your leg as a post. Bend your knee and come back and relax your left ankle as you come in. Now press out, straighten your left ankle, really extending up and down high heel. Extend your right leg and bend and in. And extend, kick, bend, resist. Extend, kick, 
bend, resist. The hardest part of this is keeping your knee in tabletop the whole time. In the choreography, maybe. <laughs> Good. After this, we're going to do a turned out single leg. And then we're going to go in to some other work. Bridge work. Yay! Good. Now, bring both feet down. Turn your feet out to a Pilates V position. Extend your, your uh, left leg straight up like a pose. If you cannot achieve this, bend your knee slightly, still turning it out. Not a frog, more of a diamond. So halfway between the straight and halfway between the frog and the diamond position. If you have the ability to straighten your leg, go ahead. We're going to press it out and resist it back in. Adjust your foot if you need to. Mine's a little bit too close. And press. And in. Okay, good. And press. And in. Good. Again, we're extending our ankle as we press up and relax as we come back in. Our foot's not doing anything here other than extending straight up to the ceiling. We're going to add some choreography when we're pressed down on the tenth one. Here's nine and ten. Stay out of the top. We're going to flex our foot to lower it and point it to float it back up. We're not shifting in our body. We're making very certain that we're staying very stable. Good. Here's four. We're going to go to six. Five. And six. Now, keep this back hip down. Come across your body an inch with your leg. And then away from your body an inch. Not far. Right there, right? Here's three. Really press energy out of your standing leg. Lengthening your body up, up, up. Let's do one more. Come back to center. Now inhale your leg away from your body and exhale it across in a circle. And inhale and exhale. You might find that leg circles here are easier than leg circles on the mat because you have that grounding point with your standing leg. Now go ahead and reverse. One. And two, here's three, four, just two more. Good. Now go ahead and hug that, that knee into your chest. Give it a nice little hug and resist the springs back in. Let's switch legs. So go ahead and find the Pilates V position to begin. Go ahead and adjust your neutral spine, whatever you might need to do. Extend that right leg up, turn it out. Or if this is not um, accessible to you, not to frog, but to diamond, right? So between the frog and the extended leg is the diamond shape. It's a turned out hook position if you're familiar with that term. term. So we're going to press out, lengthen it up, find that nice length in the front of our hip. And when we come in, we're going to relax our ankle. As we press out, we're going to press the high heel. When we come in, we're going to relax the ankle. Here's three. Make sure that both hip bones are equally grounded. Allow that leg to become heavy in the hip socket. Good. Find a nice breath. Wrap the ribs, draw the belly to the spine. One more and stay out there. Now flex the foot to lower and point to lift and extend. You're using our abdominals for the lower and the lift. No swinging. You'll know if you swing for sure, because your back hip will pop off the mat. One more. Now, an inch across the body, and an inch away. And we tick, and then we tuck, and tick, and tuck. Good. Really grounded through those obliques on the opposite side. Come back to center. Six leg circles in each direction. Inhale away and exhale across. And inhale and exhale. Inhale. No swinging here either, right? Good. One more and then we'll reverse. So we'll inhale across the body and exhale it back up. Instead of finding out how wide your circles can be. Why don't you instead try to find out how stable you can make your sacrum?
Very good. Pull that knee into the chest. Give it a nice hug. And now resist the springs back in. Good job. We're going to come up real fast. I don't know what springs you put on for your single leg work, but I am going to invite you to find uh, one medium and one heavy for this uh, bridge work. So we are going to be bridging for a hot second. We're going to put our hand press down. I'm going to find my mini magic circle or whatever you would like to use for this. I'm going to come to lying down. I'm going to put my mini magic circle above my knees between my thighs. I am on the balls of my feet. I'm going to inhale, exhale, hinge bridge up, and lower it all down. Now on the hinge bridge, we're not finding articulation. We're squeezing our glutes and we're lifting up. Squeeze your hamstrings to do like a hamstring curl to try to extend your knees over the foot bar so you're not pressing the carriage out. As you lift, and lower. Now let's do one more. We're going to lift. And now we're going to pulse up for one, two. So lift a high heel, three, four. Use your hamstrings, five, six. Drop your heels and press out and in. Hamstring work and press. Squeeze your glutes and pull with your hamstrings to extend your knees over the foot bar. Really pull across, pulling the carriage in. Good, here's four. And squeeze. Squeeze it on that ring with your inner thighs. Or whatever you have, or nothing. Squeeze it on the air. And here is six. Now lower your hips down. We're going to remove the ring. Walk your feet in closer. We're going to be doing some one-legged work. Inhale, exhale, hinge, bridge up. Right leg up. And now lower, lift your heel for six. Five, four. Lift your leg up as a pose. Don't do it like I do, or you lift it straight up your nose. And six. Now leave it there and press out and pull in. If this is too heavy for you, you can lower and lift your leg. Squeeze your glutes, hamstring curl. One more. And lower. So, lift the left leg up. The reason you don't want it coming towards your nose is you don't want any twisting. So lower and lift your heel six times. Two, three, four. Woo, hamstring. And six. And now press out and in. And two. And in. Here's three. Here's four. Here's five. And here is six. Lower the foot down. Lower your hips down. Lift your feet up in the air. <sighs> Go ahead and pull your hamstrings in. Point and flex your feet a few times. <sighs> My trainer Katie Rowley does this after bridging and I love it. <sighs> Good. All right. Pull your knees into your chest. Give them a nice hug. Try to lift your tail off the mat, hugging your knees into your nose. If that doesn't work for you, with your head, neck, and shoulders up, go ahead and lower and try to pull your tailbone off the mat. Get a nice stretch of that low back. We're going to roll to the side. <clears throat> Come up to sitting. We're going to do some arm work. So, for arm work, I use one medium, one light spring on my machine. That's one red, one blue. But uh, whatever you use for arm work, hundreds. We're going to be doing all of this with our heads down today. So go ahead and lift your headrest if you'd like. Use a neck pillow, whatever you would like to do. I'm going to scooch away from the shoulder block slightly. I'm going to press down, bringing my hands over my sternum. Oh, I'm going to make sure my straps aren't crossed too. I'm going to lift my feet up to tabletop. From there, I'm going to press down, squeezing under my arms, bringing my hands down on my hips, and float them back up and press down, and lift, here's three, we're going to go to four, I need six, we're going to six, oh my gosh, sorry about that guys, and one more, now, keep your hands over your sternum so you're still engaged under your arms, turn your feet out to Pilates V, 
we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna thread the needle, cheerleader arms. So I'm gonna reach my left hand to my left side and my right hand through my legs, reaching for the foot bar. And float them back up to parallel. Reach my right hand outside my right leg, reach my left hand to the foot bar. And we're going to move on. And now when I do this, my right shoulder does come up off the mat. So I am getting some rotational work here. We're not getting too much rotational work because we don't want to stress the SI area, SI joint area, but we do want a little something for our obliques, right? Good. That's why I said if you have SI joint pain, please don't do this right now. If you have a side joint pain at any time in this class, please stop. Good. One more. Arms up, feet parallel to the tabletop. Bring your arms out the width of their floor. They shouldn't be out here. We're talking about just very tiny, right? Put more paint or more weight in your pinky blade edge and squeeze that pinky blade edge down your hips, narrowing up the hips, and then separate to the V at the top with the other former, and pull, and release, and pull. I'm not going all the way up, I'm stopping at my sternum so I have a lot of weight underneath my underarm. I'm really keeping that press. Let's do one more. Think of tweezing your sits bones here too, right? Now, Keep your hands are there, but float them out to the T. Still more weight your pinky blade edge and pull in. Palms more up to the ceiling than to your hips and open. And pull. You should really be able to find the underarm connection here in the T position arms. Here's five. And here's six. Now. Float your arms up, still keeping, them, still keeping that underarm connection. We're going to extend our arms and extend our legs and pull it back to parallel. Keeping our hands still floating over our 12th row and sternum before our bra strap and extend and come back. Now this next row, we're going to extend and we're going to start pumping our arms for the hundreds with our head down. So extend, really squeeze on the leg and begin pumping. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Now, you're not getting as much core work, so really squeeze under the arms and start extending your fingertips towards the foot bar. Really flatten and widen your shoulder blades and really uh, open up your collarbone area while softening through the sternum, but maintaining a neutral spine. If you find that your lower back is hurting, diamond your legs or hook them to really weight the sacrum onto the mat. Because you're rocking towards your tailbone if you're feeling that. You're not maintaining your neutral spine area. <sighs> Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two, three, four, five. One more. Exhale, two, three, four, five. Lift your arms, bend your knees into tabletop, float your hands up to the sternum area. Do not release them. Now, lower your hands to your hips. Extend just your left leg. Don't pull your right knee in. Keep it in tabletop and lift. Now leave your left leg, extend your right leg to work it all and up. And left leg and lift. Good. We have two more sets. Here's five. And six. We have our next and final set of uh, arm exercises with our hands in the straps. Is we're going to extend both hands, extend our legs, turn the legs out to Pilates feet, separate them the width of the carriage, pull them back in with your inner thighs, bring your legs back to parallel, pull the tabletop, float your hands up. This movement would be similar to the uh, coordination that I teach, but not quite, but a little bit. The leg. Uh, portion of it is. So press down with your arms, extend your legs, turn it out to Pilates feet, open your legs, squeeze them back together, parallel, pull into tabletop, and lift, and extend, turn out, open, close, parallel, tabletop, lift. Good. One more. Oh, I'm really feeling it in my underarms now. I don't know about any 
anybody else. Okay. Lower your feet down to the mat. We're going to peg our straps. Shake out our arms. Pull it across your body if you like it. Give it a little stretch, maybe. Okay. Scooch away from the shoulder blocks. Drop your headrest. We're going to hold on to our pegs or our shoulder blocks as if, uh, like my trainer Katie says, they're stinky socks. Don't hold on to them for dear life and yank yourself up by your muscles in your neck. You really want to squeeze under the arms here that we've been working. Draw your feet into a tight tabletop. Now remember the tuck tilt that we were doing in the beginning of the class? We're going to take the tuck and we're going to deepen it to try to pull our, pull our uh, pelvis or our pelvic bone up towards our nose slightly. We're not rolling up to our shoulder blade tips. We're just going to imprint our spine and lift and lower. Neutral and imprint and lift our tailbone and lower and find neutral and imprint and lift. Your feet should not be up here. You should not be using them to swing your body over your head. This is a nice lower back stretch, but it's also a nice lower abdominal exercise. So stinky socks, guys. Don't forget, don't hang on for your life. After this, we're going to be doing some scissors, double leg lower lift, and then corkscrew. And then we're going to be moving on. So legs up to the ceiling. Leave your head, neck, and shoulders down. We're going to separate our legs, reach our left leg away, hold on behind my thigh underneath the knee and pull, pull, and switch. And pull, pull. Let your leg come to you. Keep your back down. Don't separate your legs so far that your hips are twisting though, right? This is a nice hamstring stretch. It takes a lot of boxier body strength to stabilize it. But we shouldn't be twisting. We're just, think of this more as like a nice little contained stretch for this guy, right? Okay, both feet up. Now parallel your feet. Now flex to lower. One, two, three. I'm holding onto my pegs gently again. Point your toes and lift. And flex your feet lower. One, two, three. Now point your toes and lift. I don't have any movement in my sacrum. One more. Now point your toes and lift. We're going to be doing corkscrew one now. That means that both of my hip bones are connected down into the carriage. Think of having a rebar pressing down through your hip bones, grounding on both sides. So your legs can slide against each other, but they're not going to lift on either side of your body. So I'm going to bring it over to the left, lower it down to the foot bar, bring it to the right, and up. Now I'm going to go right and down and left and up. My circles are small. They are a little bit bigger than a squishy ball. I'm really drawing in on everything, really finding the neutral spine here. One more, and we're going to go around, around, and up. Draw your knees into your chest. Place your feet on the foot bar. I have the arch of my foot on the foot bar. My legs are squeezed together. I'm going to butterfly one leg at a time. I'm still going to have that rebar I'm going through my hips through the carriage. So I'm going to open my left leg and squeeze the inner thigh and glutes to pull it back up. Now open the right leg and squeeze it back in. You shouldn't have any rocking or shifting on the weight on the back side of your body. Pop from your arms down by your side. Good. This is a nice strengthening exercise around all those hip bones and everything. So we're going to rotate the femur and the hip socket to open. Squeeze the inner thigh to close. Great. So now we're going to come off the side. We're going to come up to sitting. We're going to be doing clam on the carriage. Before we do that, we can go ahead and change our springs over to one medium spring or one red spring. That's what I'm going to be doing for swan and then uh, swan on the box. And then we're going to be doing some arms on the box backwards and front. Since we are on the box, the springs will be a little bit heavier. We'll be lifted up. So one red is all I'm going to be using today. Depending on the length of your body for clam on the box or uh, on the carriage, 
you might want to put your arms over the shoulder block. I'm going in front for anyone's uh, personal curiosity. I am 5'6". I have my machine all the way in. Uh, I like starting from there personally. So depending on how tall you are, you might have to come out. I'm going to line the back of my body up with the back of the carriage. I'm going to lift up out of my side closest to the mat. I have my legs stacked in a 90 degree position. I have the weight on my front thigh. It's not going to lift off of my front thigh. I shouldn't feel any less weight on the front of my thigh near my knee so that I can make sure that I'm not shifting back into my low back. My abs are up and in, my ribs are wrapped. I'm squeezing under the arm that we just worked so hard to work out with the arm work. I platform my hand on my side. I have my other hand tented and spider fingers in front of my body. Now, 90 degrees from my body to my thigh, as much as I can do from my thigh to my shin, and then I have my feet flexed. Now I'm gonna lift my feet and lower. I'm not going like this, okay? I'm still lifted. I'm using my inner thigh and my glutes to lift. Good. Here's six. Lift up, squeeze, nice long neck. Nine. Now 10, stay up. Okay, if you can't reach the foot bar, just try to get your foot up near the foot bar, right? And open and close. Two. Good. Three. I really feel the burn when I'm pressing into the foot bar with my bottom uh, outside loose. Here's nine. Now on 10, stay up. Now don't pulse up by, by squishing back, but pulse your rotator. So really rotate, rotate, rotate. Really work the rotation in your hip. Two more. Now lower your feet. Press yourself away, come down on your back. We're gonna put our, our left foot on. We're going to bring our right foot across and above the right ankle. I'm in a figure four stretch. I don't want to shift my hips here, but I really want to try to gently open the hip. If it helps, you place a hand on your thigh. You shouldn't go like this though, guys. That's twisting your hips. It's a rotation that we're not looking for while we're working on the SI joint. Try to be careful about it. If you need more, flex your foot back. If you need even more, you can try to scooch your booty to the foot bar, maybe. Maybe that's where you're at today. But don't press the carriage away. Good. Let's go to claim on the other side, and then we'll figure four stretch on the other side before we move on to some box work. So again, guys, depending on your height, you might want your forearm over your shoulder blocks. Mine's in front. I'm going to line my body up with the back of my box. I'm going to lift my body up. So I'm squeezing underneath the arm, lengthening through my neck, lifting my arms, wrapping my arms, drawing my belly to my spine. I have a 90 degree bend from my body to my thighs, as much as I can from my thighs to my calves, and then my feet are flexed. Now, without sinking down your waist, go ahead and lift the feet and lower, and lift and lower. Again, if your foot bar doesn't work for this, just try to lift it up as much as you can, or not as much as you can, up to where about where the foot bar would be. Now, my fingers are tented in front of me to help support. I'm not shifting back off my thigh. Now we're gonna open and squeeze. Now rotate the femur and the hips up to open the clamp and squeeze the inner thighs to shut it. Good. This is the hardest clamp I've ever done, I'm not gonna lie. I think it's the pressure of that top. It's higher than I usually lift my clamp. Good, lift up out of your ribs. And now stay up there. Now rotate, rotate. Rotate. You can't even see the movement in my body. You should see no shifting in your body. Now squeeze your clean together. Lower your feet. Roll on your back. Place your left foot on. Bring your right above your ankle shin across. Or locate that figure four stretch you want. I scoot it in on this side because it feels nice. But I'm making sure that my hips are not shifting. After this. We have swan and swimming, and then we're going to move into arms facing the upright, and then arms facing the foot bar. So let's go ahead and do some box work. 
Go ahead and release. Roll to the side. Again, guys, for Swan, I have one medium spring on. That is one red spring on my machine. I'm going to place my box, my long box, on my carriage. If you need a sticky mat for Swan, please find that. For Swan, working with the SI joint, just to be careful, because I'm not sure what's going on with your body, I will recommend to you that you only come up half as far as you normally would for the Swan until you figure out how your body's doing. So I'm going to place one hand on, the other hand on. I'm going to float one leg up, then the other. Now, I'm going to locate where my sternum and 12th rib meet, or my bra strap, to put it against the edge of the box. I'm going to squeeze my inner thighs together, draw my abdominals up and in, and wrap my glutes to lift my thighs up off the box. So we don't want any tension in our hips, right? So, I'm going to press out on one. I'm going to come up half as far on two. I'm going to wrap my ribs even tighter, draw my belly up to my spine even tighter, and squeeze my inner thighs even tighter. I'm going to press back, and I'm going to come in. Now, if you can squeeze your legs so much that they're touchy, odds are you're not going to come up as far as, far as you normally would anyways, because it is protecting your low back. While you're doing that, also, draw your abdominals up and pulling that belly button to the spine. Try to create a continuous curve from the tip top of your head shooting out through your tailbone so you're not crunching in that low back. Now, let's do one more. Now, press out and come in. Now, go ahead and rest your forearms on your upper. Go ahead and look down. Rest your, rest your head wherever you can. We're going to shake out our legs real fast. We're going to do some lower body swimming prep. So squeeze your legs together, draw your abdominals up and then wrap your ribs. Without shifting in the front of your hip bones, float your left leg up and lower. Now do your right leg. Now float your left leg. Really draw the belly up and in. Imagine there's a trail of ants crawling under your belly, right leg. One more on each side. And right leg. And now squeeze those inner thighs, draw that abdominal up and in and squeeze your glutes to float your legs up and lower. Don't crease into your low back on this. Just use your glutes. Now, leave your legs lifted, float your right arm out, float your left arm out. Squeeze under the arms, dry your abdominals up and in, and begin swimming if you're able to. If not, hold this position. If you cannot hold the position with your arms over your head, rest your forearms back onto the foot bar and just squeeze your glutes and inner thighs to lift your legs. Let's do one more breath. Now, lower your legs. Find your forearms on the foot bar before you carefully come off to the side. Great. Right. Let's go ahead and do some arm work. So you might be thinking, oh no, what's arm work have to do with uh, SI joint work? Well, you need to work your arms anyways, but we're going to squeeze in on the, we're going to place our feet on either side of the box and squeeze in on the box gently, not with our knees, but by tweezing our sits bones and squeezing our glutes and our inner thighs. It should just be a gentle pressure on the inside of our legs. <sighs> Draw your abdominals up and in, wrap your wrists, stack your shoulders over your hips. Now that we know the body position, let's go ahead and find our straps. We're going to reach our arms right out in front of us, roll our shoulders up, back and down. Don't lean back to do this. We're only going to be bending at the elbows, maintaining that neutral body position. And bend. And bend. The hardest part about this is that it's actually core work, guys. This is not necessarily an arm exercise. I know I said we're doing arms. Let's think of it as abdominals. One more. Now, leave your hands where they are, flip them out to the side, Draw your shoulders up, back and down. We're gonna row. So pull back, pulling the uh, handles or your straps to, to your uh, bra strap, 12th rib, sternum area. Wrap your ribs, squeeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, and extend. There's no back extension here, but there is back work. So you shouldn't be arching here. 
but you should be squeezing the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Think of uh, chest expansion. Good, here's eight. And nine. Let's do one more. And 10. Let's work a different part of our shoulder. So let's cross our straps. Same thing. And pull, squeeze the bottom tips of your blades and extend and pull. Don't drop your hands down here when you do it. Keep them up high and pull. Again, just like we did with the pegs, think of your holding stinky socks. So you're really drawing them from the abdominals, squeezing the bottom tips of those shoulder blades. You're not pulling from the forearms and rounding in on your shoulders. We're still tweezing in our seats and squeezing our inner thighs to find some inner thigh hip work here, right? Inner thigh, outer thigh, hip work. Good job. So go ahead and uncross. We're gonna lift our hands up, roll our shoulders up, back and down. My palms are facing each other. We're gonna open to a T, switching the straps to our thumbs and come back in. My thumbs naturally switch to my fingers and I switch them to my thumbs and to the fingers. When you do this, no arching, remember? Wrap your arms even tighter as you pull your arms up to the side. Good. We have two more, and then we're gonna work on some triceps. There we go. Now, drop your hands down real fast. Let's go ahead and take our straps, and we'll go ahead and pull our arm across. Pull the other arm across. We're not nearly done, but there's no point in really stressing the body, right? Pull that tricep down your back. Get it ready for the next work and the other one. Good. Now, sit up tall, roll your shoulders up, back and down. My carriage should come away from the bumper and I'm going to hinge forward slightly. I'm not gonna dump out my low back. I'm drawing my abdominals up and in and I'm reaching the tip top of my head where the wall and the ceiling meet, and there's a straight line shooting out through my tailbone down to the springs. I'm going to press back with a long lever and come back forward to my knees and press back. Don't come back past your knees so we don't round in through the shoulders. Good. Still squeezing our, our inner thighs and tweezing our sits bones. Here's nine. Abs up and in. Wrap your ribs. On ten, stay back. Now bend at the elbow and straighten. Squeeze the bottom tips of the shoulder blades. Really reach out through the tip top of the head. Here's six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And release it back in. Take the straps, lift your legs up tall. Walk your fingertips forward. We're not rounding over. We are just reaching at a flat back hinge for the hamstrings. Tip top of the head up through the tailbones. Flex your feet if you're not feeling anything. Flex the back strong. Good. We're going to go ahead and carefully turn around to face the front of the machine. We're going to be doing some serving, some hinging, some hug a train, some arm circling. We're gonna scooch back, bring the straps so they're down, your arms are down by your hips. We're not gonna come back further. If you have shoulder issues, it can be very harmful. Now we're gonna still tweeze our sits bones, squeeze in on our inner thigh, and lift up the starving to our sternum and 12th rib meet, just like we did for the arm work when we were lying on our backs. And inhale to lift, and exhale to lower. Abs up and in, sit up tall, don't sink into your low back. If you have a mirror nearby, go ahead and take a look. Good. And here's nine. Now on 10, we'll stay up. Bring your hands together in a hug a tree position. Round your shoulders up and down, now open. And exhale to tap. Don't allow your back arch when you open. Keep it all together, wrap your ribs even tighter when you open. Wrap your ribs even tighter when you close them. So find the rack when you open, find the rack when you close. Here's nine, really tweezing the bottom tips of those shoulder blades again. Good, 
Now, take your hands, make a diamond. Place them on the front of your head, just like this. Now hinge forward, wrapping your ribs, reaching the tip top of your head up through your tail. Your tailbone will be shooting towards the back, back upright now, and sit up. Just an inch, now hinge forward an inch. Abs up and in, wrapping the ribs, and back. Now press into the pinky blade edge to assist the hinge, and lift. Squeeze the bottom tips of the shoulder blades and lift, and reach, and lift. Now one more, stay there. Now extend your arms out to a super girl where they're separated. They won't be right in front of your shoulders, so be reaching over the uprights behind you, and then bend back in, and reach, and now bend back in, and reach, and bend. Wrap the ribs, throw the belly button up and in. Don't allow a sinking to occur in your lower back. Really reach up tall, increasing the length between your tailbone to the tip top of your head. Nine, after this, you just have arm circles. We're gonna do some standing side controls after that. Now come down, keep your hands by your side. Now lift up to the, your uh, serving, lift out to a T, and lower down. So we're gonna combine some movements. Serving, T, and lower. Serving. T and lower, sit up tall. We're only doing two more and then we're reversing. <sighs> Don't lose those lower abs. Now open to a T, squeeze it in. Don't touch them, bring them in front of the uprights. We don't want to crunch in on our shoulder blades. <sighs> Woo, this is hard. And here's four. Sit up nice and tall. Squeeze those sits bones. Squeeze those inner thighs. Now allow the care to carefully come into the bumper. Peg your straps. We're going to go ahead and do some standing side controls. So to do that, we are going to come into a short box position. The box is there for you to use with your standing side controls if you would like to use it. We are going to keep one medium spring or one red spring on my machine. I'm going to drop a flip bar because we're going to be doing some bird dog work after this. I'm going to stand on my standing platform, squeeze my glutes, come up, and then gently place my foot on the carriage. If you cannot carefully get up on your machine in this manner, please do not do standing side controls. I have my foot on the edge closest to my seating platform, but if you need more support so that your hips don't shift and rotate when you do this, please place your foot on the box. This depends on how your hips are feeling today and all that jazz, right? So I'm gonna place my foot here, I'm gonna line my feet up, I'm gonna bend my knees and hinge forward at the hips. This is the same hinge that we did on the box. Facing the uprights and facing the foot bar. I wrap my ribs, draw my abdominals up and in. I'm not swinging out my low back. I'm drawing my abs up and in. I have a straight line from the tip top of my head shooting up through my tailbone. I'm going to dime in my hands again, but place them on the small of my back. I'm going to place my weight in my standing platform leg and press out my carriage leg and bend it back in. Now resist and come back in. The weight is lighter on this, so I should really feel it in my standing leg. Wrap those ribs, tweeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades, and really hinge toward without tucking. Let's do two more. Now come back in, keep the carriage of the bum with your inner thighs, and switch your legs to your standing platform leg. And now press and resist, and press and resist. There's three, four, wrap the ribs, draw the shoulders up, back and down, widen and flatten the shoulder blades, wide collarbone, soft sternum. Let's do two more. Now come back in. Now, stand at the bumper, stand up tall, arms out to a T, spiral out to your pinky blade edge and press down with your shoulder blades to really increase 
the pressure underneath your underarms. Squeeze your glutes to open up the hip flexors. Now open your legs to the side and resist them back in. Now equally open to the side and equally resist back in. Find the movement coming from the outside of the hips. Good. Abs up and in, wrap your ribs, tweeze the bottom tips of your shoulder blades. Nice long neck. Let's do two more. And then we're gonna go to the other side and then we'll be doing some quadruped or kneeling work. So if you need a uh, something for under your knees, please start thinking about that now too. Now place the weight in your seating platform leg. Step back carefully. And let's go to the other side. So again, I stand up on the standing platform first for safety purposes. I'm going to squeeze my glutes to come up to standing. Place my foot where I need to for the way my uh, SI joint area is feeling today. If it is causing pain, or it has been, if it's causing pain, please don't do this uh, class. But if you're worried about it, please place your foot up against the uh, box so that you can use it to, as tactile feedback to help you do not shift. Otherwise, I'm going to bend my knees, hinge at the hips, reaching out tall and long, wrap my ribs, draw my abs up and in, nice wide collarbone, nice soft sternum, squeezing the bottom steps of my shoulder blades, sliding them down my back, hands in a diamond, place my weight by standing platform, and press it open, and resist it closed. Guys, do not manhandle the machine when the spring is on one rep. Press it away and resist it back in. If the springs are too light, you could go flying. And here's nine. And here's 10. Okay, now bring the carriage in all the way. Squeeze your inner thighs. Shift the weight to your, your carriage leg. Press out from the same platform and resist it back in. Here's where the twisting comes for me. So be very cognizant that you're really pressing from where the, the, where the uh, glutes on the thigh meet and from the outside of the hip to move the machine. Go as slow as you have to. Once you start to go faster, a lot of times what happens is a lot of twisting can occur. Okay, one more. Now, hold the carriage into the bumper with your inner thighs. Stand up tall. Arms out to a T, put more weight in your pinky blade edge to lengthen the neck, draw the shoulder blades down, and now resist it open, and resist it closed. Now, open it equally on both sides of your legs, and close it equally with both sides of your legs. Good. Keep it going. Find the breath, wrap the ribs, draw the abdominals up and in, squeeze the glutes, open up the front of the hip flexors. Now let's do one more. And resist it back in, press down on those pinky blade edges. Place the weight on your standing platform leg. Step back carefully off the carriage with your, or off the carriage with your carriage leg. And then come off the carriage. Great job, guys. So, we have, uh, we're gonna place one blue screw. I have one red on, we're gonna change it out for one blue or one light spring. It's one blue in my machine. I'm going to walk my knees up so that my thighs are touching my shoulder pads. I'm in a quadruped position, so my shoulders are over my wrists, my hips are over my knees. I've taken my thumbs and I've brought them around to meet my fingers. Because when we move the carriage by uh, coming up into an angry cat, we don't want to saw off our thumb with the carriage, right? So while we're here, make sure you're not here. Woo, we're not in cat. We're in neutral spine. So we're drawing our ribs up and in. We have a straight line from the tip top of our head shooting up through our tail. If you tend to walk around with your, uh, with your tailbone sticking up, think of tucking your tail slightly so that you're in a nice neutral spine, just like you would be if you were lying down. We've taken our neutral spine lying down and we've flipped it over onto all fours. 
Now, from here, I'm going to tuck my tail, lift up to move the carriage. I'm not going to saw with my arms to do this. I can really move a lot if I start going like this, right? That's not what I'm doing. This is a full articulation move, and I come back to neutral. Now I tuck my tail, drop my head, lift, and lower. Imagine someone has two fingers at the, at the two inner aspects of your you know, where they come up right here and then they start to butt, and they're, they're gonna shove you up and in. Or imagine that someone is punching you in the stomach. Think of this as kind of an elephant move, but on your knees. Let's do two more. And the final one. Good. Now I'm going to walk my feet back. I'm going to place my hands on either side of my headrest. You can also place your hands on your carriage on either side of your shoulder blocks. Depending on how tall you are, I prefer uh, the headrest route myself. My feet are hanging off the side. I am not moving the carriage. I walk my knees in towards each other. I'm going to extend my, um, what foot is that? My right foot back so it's on top of my foot bar. Now, I'm going to extend my left hand forward to hover. Now, can I lift both hands and legs and lower and tap and lift. Now, tap the foot bar. Now, really squeeze in on that standing leg and squeeze underneath the arm. I'm still... Working in a neutral spine. If this is too much for you, leave your hand on the headrest. Whoop, now lift it up and stay there. Now arm and leg will extend away from the midline and then pull back to the midline. An inch or two away and back. Your hips should not shift or splay. This is easier for me than the lower left. Funny, huh? Here's nine. Now. We're going to do 10 small circles in each direction, arms and legs the size of an orange. They should come from the glutes. You should be shifting into your low back to do it. And reverse. Abs up and in, wrap your ribs. Now, lower your hand, lower your knee. Other side, and then we'll child's pose on the carriage. So I'm satisfying this child posing on the floor, but it's better than nothing, right? Now extend your left leg behind you, Square your hips. Find that nice neutral spine. So we don't want to be here. We want to be here. Lifting up. Squeezing our glutes. Now, this side is harder for me than the other side, so please don't laugh too much. I'm going to extend my right hand. I'm going to lower hand, or lift the hand, lift leg, and then lower and tap the foot and lift. Two. And three. Abs up and in, wrap your wrist. Don't look up like I was just doing. Look straight down at the floor. Jeez Louise. <laughs> and now stay up and now away from the midline and squeeze the midline. Two. Three. Four. Five. Woo! Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Now, let's do the small circles. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three. Stretch out long. And reverse. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower hand, lower leg. Find a child's pose. You can rest your head on your carriage or your headrest, reach your hands out long. Really breathe into your lower back. Now, if you lay back to sitting, unless you're sitting too far back, please don't roll off your carriage and come up to sitting up top. We're going to go ahead and we're going to we'll place our foot bar back up to our footwork position. We are going to put one medium and one heavy spring on on my machine. That is one red, one green. I'm going to bring my headrest up for my own personal comfort. 
I do not use double loops, so I'm going to change over my foot straps. We are going to be doing some feet and straps. We're going to be working on some rotational work here, strengthening the muscle, these deep inner muscles. I'm going to come onto my back. I'm going to press my legs straight, throw one knee in, place the strap on my arch, press that leg out long, place the other strap on my arch, and bring my feet into a frog. Come into a neutral spine. Don't tuck here, right? Nice neutral spine. My knees pack over my big toes, so I'll press it out. Just like the beginning with footwork, find the length here and resist it back in. And press it out and resist. And here's three. And here's four. And five. Here's six. <sighs> Seven. I know everybody loves feet and straps, right? But don't forget, this is still work. So find the neutral spine, wrap the ribs, rotate the femur on the hip socket, squeeze the glutes. Now, press it out. Now come back into the diamond shape. We're not going all the way to a frog. We're not pressing all the way up. We're going to find the diamond shape. Now lower your legs an inch or lift them an inch. Find where you're really able to locate that inner thigh smile line area. Now, bring everything in your legs to parallel. And now open it back up. The hinge point is your heels. So close the book and open the book by rotating it. Now, continue to work those angles, but keep a neutral spine to find where the work is the hardest for you today. Is it an inch here? Is it an inch there? Is it a tweak here or there? One more. Now open it up, keep it in this diamond. Keep a heavy sacrum, float your feet up to the ceiling in a diamond. Now squeeze your glutes and hamstrings and press it back down to working level. You should not be shifting in your neutral spine and press away. And now lift and press. This is the hardest lower lift for me. I think it's because it's so much more rotational work than the regular one. But who knows, right? Maybe this one's easier for you than the parallel one. We have two more. And then we have leg circles. And then a couple little stretches. And then we're done, guys. Again, I am not a physical therapist and I am not a doctor. These are just exercises that I have researched that will strengthen around the SI joint area. Straighten your legs, straighten the ceiling. Open the width of the reformer so that you're not going out too far. Squeeze your legs down, squeeze them together and lift. Now stay the width of the reformer. We're gonna do five in each direction. Good, try not to shift on the backs of your hips. Try to keep a nice heavy sacrum. Try to keep a nice neutral spine. And now reverse, squeeze it down and open and lift and squeeze. Try not to use a ton of momentum. You'll know if you are because your legs will bounce back in the center, right? Here's four. And squeeze. And five. And squeeze. Now, leaving your legs straight up, go ahead and flex your feet. <sighs> Give the straps a little pull down. Try not to lift your tail up off the mat too much just yet. Now check your tail slightly and lift. Find that length in your low back, right? Weight that sacrum back down and open your legs to a straddle stretch. Now, bring your feet into a butterfly position where the bottom of your feet are together and open your knees wide to the side. This might not work for you if you have hip problems or knee problems. Please find a different stretch that does work for your body. Now, come back out of that stretch, bring your feet to tabletop, press one leg straight while you remove your legs from the strap, find that foot bar and remove the other foot. Come up to sitting. We're gonna straddle the machine. 
We're going to take off our heavy springs. We just have one medium spring on. I have my hands on the foot bar. I'm going to use that same pullback that I did for um, the kneeling reverse, the kneeling uh, reverse ab curl, and I'm going to press back. I'm going to acknowledge my spring. I'm going to find some length in my hands. I'm not going to round back on my back totally. I'm just going to draw my abs up and in, and we'll look over, and then I'm going to come in. I'm going to press my pinky blade edge to look to where the wall is. Still, I'm not arching my back. I'm just going to like lift. And big legs. And then I'm going to press back and acknowledge my springs. And come in. And glance through the wall in the ceiling. And one more. Press back and acknowledge the springs. Don't draw your shoulders only up to your ears. Try to still squeeze under your arms. And come in. Through the wall in the ceiling. I'm going to release my hands. I'm going to do a nice inhale. Exhale it all out. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.